When you go on Civil War battlefields today, you see two main types of cannons, some with green or blue barrels that are made of bronze or brass, and some with black barrels that are made of cast or wrought iron. The green or blue barreled guns are the old guns, the smooth bores. They fire round cannonballs. The black barreled guns, the iron guns, are rifled. These are rifle pieces that, that fire shells that spin as they leave the barrel, and these more modern cannons are going to fire farther and more accurately. Um, but both the guns essentially work the same way. You can take a 10 or a 12 pound solid piece of iron or lead, shove it down the barrel with a bag of black gunpowder until the bag ends up here. I'm going to puncture that bag with a pick through this thing called the vent. And into the vent, I'm going to put this, a friction primer, something that makes a spark right into there. I'll attach the friction primer to a rope. I'll walk outside the cannon and I'm going to look away and pull it. Okay? And this will make a little spark, this will ignite the powder bag inside, and a huge explosion will issue from this cannon, pushing the ordnance out of here. And this gun, I'll be in trouble if you fire this gun now, will recoil eight feet. If you go to a reenactment today, the guns, as loud as they sound, um, were actually three times louder during the war, they're not using as much gunpowder, and they don't recoil at a reenactment. But in the Civil War they did because there's a real shell in there, and there's a much larger explosion. And this solid piece of iron or lead can fly out of the cannon. It can go a half mile, or maybe even a mile, maybe even a mile and a half from a rifle piece, accurately sometimes. And it could disable enemy cannons. It could sink ships in a naval battle, could knock holes in buildings, could knock tree limbs down onto troops to wound and demoralize them. But of course they have worse things. Shells that either fly out over the heads of the troops and explode by fuse, or explode when they hit the ground by percussion and rain down into big bits of metal like this, shrapnel, invented by Henry Shrapnel, a British officer as a matter of fact. Now if they're getting close to my cannon, this is what I'm going to shoot, canister or grape shot. Imagine between 12 or 27 of these things packed in sawdust in a coffee can, shove it down the barrel, fire it out, the can disintegrates, and these things are going to fly out like a big shotgun blast. It's called the unwelcome messenger, a particularly devastating weapon. I could not fire this gun by myself. It takes a lot of people to do it. Ideally, it takes eight soldiers to do it. And they all have their own job. Somebody's sponging out the barrel to make sure sparks don't ignite and pre-ignite this cannon when you shove the bag of black gunpowder in there. Um, two people are running the, rolling the gun back, in, back into uh, position after it had recoiled. Um, somebody's holding their thumb over the vent with a special glove just to make sure oxygen doesn't get in there and prematurely ignite the gun as well. You're going to have somebody actually sighting the gun, somebody aiming the gun, somebody watching the effect of the fire, saying little to the left, little to the right. Right. and a couple of people running ammunition back and forth from the rear at uh, to and fro those limbers behind me. And in the distance back there, you also see caissons. Um, these limbers and then the caissons across the road are actually necessary to fire this gun. These limber chests hold the ammunition and the caissons hold more ammunition as well as additional supplies that the battery needs. So imagine eight or 10 men and 18 horses necessary to pull all this stuff around whenever you see one of these cannons on a battlefield. You can also learn a lot about a cannon by actually looking at it. And in looking at the side of this gun, the trunnion, I can see that it was made in the Phoenix Iron Company. Over here I could see that this gun, this is a 3 inch ordnance rifle, a very sleek gun made entirely of wrought iron, was patented December 9th, 1862. It's a United States gun I can see here. But when you look at the front, you really start to get a lot of information. This was the 583rd gun to come out of the Phoenix Iron Company in 1863. This gun might have been at this battle. Um, the barrel weighs 816 pounds and the inspector's initials were TTSL. Um, you could go and actually try to track where this gun was during the Civil War. These are original Civil War cannon barrels mounted on replica iron carriages. So when you go see these things on battlefields, pay respect. These are the guns that actually helped fight the Civil War.